Okay, as you can see in today's video, we're going to be going over another video about the photoelectric effect. And in this video, we're going to be talking specifically about the cutoff frequency. And I've already made some more videos about the photoelectric effect, an explanation, and then I think I did one, two, or three example videos. You can link to those in the upper right-hand corner of this video. Please don't forget, before we get started here, subscribe to my channel. Get all my excellent physics, chemistry, and math videos. Support my channel, please. Leave me a nice positive comment. Give me a thumbs up for this video. Thank you very much. Okay, let's get started. Step-by-step -step science. This is the cutoff frequency. Now, I'm just going to give you a little bit of definitions, a little bit of words here. I don't like to start this way, but I think it's a good idea for this video so you have an idea what the cutoff frequency is. The cutoff frequency, which is F0, frequency 0, is the minimum frequency of incoming light below which a photo current will not occur. So if we have a frequency less than the cutoff frequency, below the cutoff frequency, then we'll get no photoelectrons and no photocurrent. The, the light will not have enough energy to overcome the work function. Okay, the value of the cutoff frequency is a physical property of the metal. Each metal has its own cutoff frequency. Just like density, every material has its own density. It's a physical property. It's due to the type of material. Sodium metal has a different cutoff frequency than gold or silver or some other metal. Okay, the value of the cutoff frequency is equal to the work function of the metal. Now, the cutoff frequency is just a frequency. The work function is energy. So in order to actually make that statement really true, you have to take the cutoff frequency and multiply it by Planck's constant h, which we'll talk about in a moment, and then you'll get energy in joules, which you can compare to the work function, which is usually energy, which is usually expressed in electron volts, but they're both energy. Okay, so now we have this graph. We look at this graph. On the graph, we have the x-axis, we have the frequency. This is the frequency of the incoming light that you're shining on the metal plate to release those electrons. The frequency measured in hertz increases across this way on the x-axis. On the y-axis, we have the kinetic energy, the maximum kinetic energy measured in electron volts. That, Ill, that, Ill, that will be the kinetic energy of the photoelectrons that are going to be used to generate the photocurrent, the electrons that have come off our metal plate when we have enough energy to overcome the work function and give those electrons some kinetic energy. Okay, now way, the, way, the way it works is like this. Okay, we're going to start down here, some low value for the frequency, maybe not right at zero, but some low value, and we're going to be increasing across that graph. And what happens to the frequency? Well, the frequency increases. What else is going on there? Well, you know from this equation that the frequency and the energy are directly related to each other. So as we increase the frequency, we multiply by Planck's constant, we increase the energy. So the frequency and the energy are directly related to each other. And then remember, we have this equation, C, the speed of light, is equal to the frequency times wavelength, lambda. That means that the wavelength is going to be equal to the speed of light, C, divided by the frequency, F. And that means that those two values are inversely proportional to each other. So as we go across here, we're increasing the frequency, but more importantly, we're increasing the uh, energy and the wavelength is decreasing, okay? But we call it the cutoff frequency. You could also call it the cutoff energy or the cutoff wavelength, but we don't usually don't refer to it that way. Increasing frequency, increasing energy, and decreasing wavelength of light that we're shining. Now, at some point, the light that we're shining will have a high enough frequency and a high enough energy that it will overcome the work function and it will release some electrons, and any remaining energy above the work function will be given to those electrons as kinetic energy. So you can see after that, we have electrons. That means we're getting electrons, and we're giving the electrons some kinetic energy. And the greater the frequency, the more energy is left over after overcoming the work function, and then the, the electrons will have more kinetic energy, like that. Now, I did say every metal has its own cutoff frequency. So we can do the same thing for a second metal, for example. This one we're going to say has a lower cutoff frequency. We reach the cutoff frequency, enough energy to overcome the work function. And you get another graph, another line like that, that shows that the energy that those have as the frequency uh, increases, those have, uh, the electrons would have. Now, you'll notice those lines are parallel. We'll talk about that in just a moment. That's a fascinating part of this. But those points where we release those, start releasing those electrons, we know that frequency, and we know if we go just above that, we'll have energy left over for the electrons. Okay, so generate electrons with kinetic 
energy. Now, another interesting or fascinating thing is we follow those lines back down to the y-axis. You'll notice they intercept the y-axis right there. Where those two values, where each of those lines crosses the y-axis, that's going to be the work function. So we have work function number one and work function for metal number two. W0 is the work function. F0 is the cutoff frequency. Like that. Isn't that fascinating? All works out like that. Now you'll notice, just to, uh, uh, just to um, uh, summarize, the x-intercept is equal to the cutoff frequency. That's the cutoff frequency. Okay, then the y-intercept is equal to the work function, and the slope of each of those lines, you'll know that they both have the same slope. The, all the lines will always have the same slope on the same graph, and the slope of the line is equal to Planck's constant. Okay, Planck's constant, 6.63 times 10 to the minus 31, if I remember correctly. All right, like that. Okay, now I think I was going to do a little bit more of a summary. Here's our graph again. Don't forget, when we go across, we increase the energy because we're increasing the frequency, and then we're decreasing the wavelength because the wavelength and the frequency are inversely proportional. We just went over that. And remember, at the cutoff frequency, at the cutoff frequency, which is right there, then we basically have the work function. Now, it's the like I said, the cutoff frequency is a frequency, which is measured in hertz, work function is energy, which is usually measured in joules, not joules, electron volts. So you can't directly compare them, so to speak, but if you multiply H times F, then you'll get energy. Energy in joules, work function could be in joules, but it's usually in electron volts, but it's the same thing, energy. You just have to change the units and you get the same value. Okay, now, once we go above the cutoff frequency, right below the cutoff frequency, no photoelectrons, no photocurrent, at the cutoff frequency, enough energy to generate a current, release those electrons. But above, we have like extra energy left over or after overcoming the work function. And the energy that's left over is given to the electrons in the form of motion or given to the motion in the form of like whatever it is, given to them in the form of uh, uh, kinetic energy. And you can calculate the kinetic energy by taking the energy of the incoming light, that's like the total amount that's coming in, you subtract from that the amount that's used to overcome the work function, so you subtract the work function, okay? And then you'll have the remaining energy if you're above the cutoff frequency, and that energy will be given to those electrons as kinetic energy, and they'll go flying off to generate the photo current. Okay, remember, all these have to be in the same units. Usually we convert this all like to electron volts. Okay, so there you go. That's a little bit of introduction. Now, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go and show you a demonstration, a simulation from PHET Simulations. They have an excellent simulation for um, the photoelectric effect. So let's go and do that right now. Okay, this simulation comes from the good people at PHET Simulations. There's their website. Whether you're teaching or learning, they have excellent simulations for math and sciences, chemistry, physics. Well, they check them out. They're very helpful. Okay, now here's a simulation that we're going to be using for the photoelectric effect. This is the general setup for the photoelectric effect. We have here our uh, vacuum chamber here. We have a metal plate, and on that metal plate, we are shining light. Okay, here's the light that we're shining. We're shining light on this metal plate, and that metal plate is currently set to sodium. You can change it to different metals. We're just going to be using sodium. And here we have the intensity of light. We can turn it off. We can turn it on. I just had it set right around 75%. Here is the wavelength of the light. Here are the colors in the rainbow, red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, and violet. We have long wavelength, short wavelength, low energy and frequency, and high energy and frequency. The photoelectrons that will come off to generate our photo current will come to this plate. You can measure the current here. This is a battery which we can use for stopping potential. We're not going to be using stopping potential because we're talking about the cutoff frequency. And then I have the graph turned on here, and the graph shows the same graph, the same information that was in the presentation. That would be the kinetic energy of the electrons, of the photoelectrons and electron volts, and the frequency of light. That would be the frequency of this light, which is measured in hertz. And this is these values times 10 to the 15 hertz. Okay? Now, once again, we're talking about the cutoff frequency, and you can see, because I'm shining light on here, it happens to be in the infrared, 
I'm showing light on here, no electrons are coming up. That means that this light has less energy than the work function of this metal, which is sodium. And we want to try and figure out what is the cutoff frequency for in this case. Okay? So not enough energy to overcome the work function. Now what I can do is I can move this slider across here. As I move the slider across here, then I'm going to be decreasing the wavelength. As I decrease the wavelength, I'm going to be increasing the energy and increasing the frequency, and we want to find the cutoff frequency. And we also want to watch our graph here. You can see as I slide this across, okay, this little dot is moving across. We have no energy. We have, we're below the cutoff frequency. And then at some point, as we get across here, right around somewhere, maybe like right around here, we start to get some photoelectrons. Because now this light has more energy than the work function, and the extra energy above the work function is given to these electrons in kinetic energy. So once again, if I continue decreasing the wavelength, increasing the frequency, those electrons are going to have more and more energy. And you can see we're drawing a line here. We get a line on our graph, and that is the energy of the electrons, the kinetic energy in electron volts versus the frequency of this light. When I'm above the cutoff frequency, okay, then they have kinetic energy, and I have electrons, and they have kinetic energy. When I'm below the cutoff frequency, then somewhere like right around here is the cutoff frequency. Okay, you see those electrons, there are no electrons because they don't have enough, the light doesn't have enough energy to overcome the work function. Now let's see if we can figure out where is the actual cutoff frequency. Now here we have wavelength, so really we're talking about the cutoff wavelength, but we're going to convert that to the cutoff frequency. All right, so here we're below the cutoff frequency, and here we're above the cutoff frequency. So I can move this over here, and I believe somewhere right around here, I'm going to start to get some electrons that are going to be coming up, and there are those electrons. So here we have electrons with kinetic energy, and here we have no electrons with no kinetic energy. So somewhere in here, and I believe I'm going to go just like this at 543. If I can change this, I'm going to change this to 540. That's 540 nanometer. You can see I'm below the cutoff frequency. Now I'm going to change this now to 539. And you'll notice when I change it to 539, that now I'm going to get some electrons. Now, you, the electrons are coming up, and they have very little kinetic energy because the light has just a little bit more energy than the work function. So I'm just above the cutoff frequency. 549, five, excuse me, 540, 539. Somewhere around that. And I'm going to call it 540 because if I go back to 540, then once again, I get no photoelectrons because I'm below the work function, and the energy of this light, the frequency of this light, is below the cutoff frequency. Okay? So that's how we can find the cutoff frequency. Now in a moment, we'll calculate the frequency that corresponds to this wavelength. But I just want to show you, you can see here we have this graph. The slope of this line is Planck's constant. We'll do that in another video, but I'm just going to take a picture here. I'm going to put this one right here. This is for sodium. Now, I can change this to a different metal, and I can kind of do the same thing. I'm just going to run this back and forth. You can see I have a cutoff frequency. Now they have lots of a kinetic energy. I'm going to take a picture of that. I'm going to pull it over here like this, and I think I'll do one more. Let's just do calcium. I need to get in behind here. I'm going to go like this and generate the graph for calcium. I can take a picture. I can move it over here, and I can compare all three of those, and you'll notice they're all parallel to each other. They all have the same slope, and for each of those, the slope is equal to Planck's constant. Fascinating. We'll do that in the next video, maybe, where we calculate Planck's constant from one of those curves. Now, I want to go back. We said the cutoff frequency or the cutoff wavelength for sodium was 400, no, 540 nanometers. All right, right around here, you see 540, right around here, we're above the cutoff frequency. So we're going to go with 540, and I'm going to go back to my presentation, and then we're going to actually calculate the frequency for that wavelength. And I put down here cutoff wavelength, so to speak, in quotes, 540 nanometers. This is our equation that C, the speed of light, is equal to the frequency times the wavelength. 
We want to know what is the frequency so we can rearrange the equation to solve for the frequency, which is the speed of light divided by the wavelength. This is lambda, the symbol for wavelength. Now when I put the, the wavelength in here, it has to be in meters. So that's 540 nanometers. That's nano, it's one billion. So I know in one meter, there's 1.0 times 10 to the nine nanometers. This value divided by this value gives me that the wavelength in meters is 5.40 times 10 to the minus seven meters. And then I can plug that value in, the speed of light, 3.0 times 10 to the eighth meters per second. That means the, wa the wavelength we have is 540 times 10 to the minus seven meters. And then that tells me that the cutoff frequency the frequency that corresponds to this wavelength of light, which was just below the wavelength, excuse me, just above the wavelength, actually, that gave us photoelectrons and a photo current, is this value for the frequency in hertz, and that what we'll call the cutoff frequency. Okay, so there you go. I hope you found the video helpful. We did a lot. I went over an explanation of the cutoff frequency. I showed you that simulation from PHET simulations, excellent simulations. Then we actually cut, calculated from the wavelength the corresponding frequency. So I hope you found the video helpful. If you did, please do all of the following four things. Please, 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 please subscribe to my channel. Get all my excellent physics, chemistry, and math videos. Subscribe, click on the notifications bell, get all the notifications for new material from my channel. Uh, you can give me a thumbs up, leave me a nice positive comment in the comment section below, and don't forget, sharing is caring. Share this video with all your friends. Show them just how much you care. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you in the next video.